Incredible Astrology Soulmates, it's me, Stormy Grace, and here is your horoscope for July of 2020, seven months into the year, and here we go. We've had two eclipses last month. We come walking boom into another one this month. So movement. There is still movement, there's shift of direction, there's change still available this month, but nothing that we certainly can't handle, especially if we're digging into the astrology. Now, before I jump in and talk about what's happening this month, please keep in mind that the solstice gift is still available. You can check it out in the description box down below. And coming up in the month of July, we've got continuing going on with the uh, with the eat and greets. So there is still lots of learning, lots of astrologers coming to visit us. If there are questions that you have, topics you'd like to learn about, please put them in the comment section down below and I'll make sure that I use this Mercury retrograde time and go back and look over them, okay? All right, you guys, let's jump in and talk about what's going on for you this month, Aries. As we're coming into the month, we are coming in with Mars in your sign. It's your ruling planet. It's in your sign. Full power, lots of drive, lots of energy, lots of movement going on. So enjoy it. Enjoy being active. Enjoy taking on projects, initiating things, being in the movement of what you've got going on. It's always nice when the ruling planet comes home to roost, right? As well, coming into July, Venus is also out of retrograde. So this I think is so brilliant for you because it speaks very well to having clarity, especially financial clarity, clarity in your relationships and clarity on things of value. So it's the, the gift of the beautiful mind. There's lots of clarity available to you as well. I do keep getting this sense as I go through your horoscope for the month that um, <clears throat> if you do happen to be an Aries energy who's ready for some romance or just ready to play, ready for some joy, some fun, doing things socially and even socially locally might be something that you're able to find yourself getting into. It's like, you know, have a little mini barbecue with the neighbors or something like that. There's a lot of good beautiful mind or value to be found in that energy as we travel this month as well. Now on the very first of the month, we walk into July with Saturn still in retrograde, of course, but backing up into that energy of Capricorn. So this lights up your 10th house space. You've been working on the 10th house now. It's not new information. So as Saturn continues the retrograde and comes back into Capricorn, it's really Saturn coming back for the next handful of months to say, did you pay attention to the lessons, right? Right? Did you learn about your career, your soul level calling, um, your industry, right? What you're doing in the world? Because career here is what we identify in the 10th house, but it doesn't always have to be the work that you're doing in terms of a physical career. Maybe you're unemployed. Maybe you are retired. What are you doing and giving out to the world? What are you offering back? Saturn's return back in here is going to pull your attention here again and say, do you need to get more organized here? Do you need to be more disciplined in this particular area? Do you need more training? We just had a Jupiter-Pluto conjunction. What do you need to fill in the gaps? Who do you need to ask for help? Saturn will definitely bring your attention here because it's literally this idea of raising the vibration here, leveling up, um, self-discipline as a means of freedom, getting organized as a means of freedom what com is what comes here. Now, just behind that on the fourth, fifth, depending on where you are in the world, we're going to have this full moon lunar eclipse happening in the energy of Capricorn as well. So this again is putting some emphasis and energy into this 10th house for you. Now at this lunar eclipse though, one of the things that I think comes back and continues to stimulate my mind for you this month is that shifts and changes. The full moon says that something has to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. With it being eclipsed, this is going to last instead of four weeks, it'll last six months down the road. But one of the things that I keep thinking is disrupted or eclipsed is that it's not so much that you're having job challenges yourself, Aries, but it could be that the government has changed regulations on your industry or on jobs or something that you're going to be doing. Maybe there have been changes within your company where the management is changing. And so it's creating a little hustle bustle in the area of work for you. This could also be too that you did receive some different training. So now you're in a management position or you're in a different position and you're needing to figure out how you're going to govern these things, which that Saturn back here in Capricorn, I think will help you get organized and figure out what to do in this area. Now, the other thing is that because this stirs up this 10th house for you, which is the tip top of the chart, I also pay attention to the bottom of the chart because as things get stirred up here in the career area, it could also mean that at home, there's something going on that also will demand your attention at this time. But ultimately, this is a transition of being willing to say, yes, I learned the lessons and over the next 
next six months, get ready to transition in this area of your life in a little bit of a different way. Now, this eclipse is going to just do a little gentle feel on Mars, Mercury, and Jupiter. So this gives me the indicator that if you were going to travel at the beginning part of this month, please make every precaution. Use it, It's almost like super retrograde energy, and Mercury is still retrograde at this point in the month, but it just gives me this idea that if you can postpone travel or do it at the end of the month, it may be um, done with a bit more ease. Now, of course, this will depend on your individual chart, but it certainly shifts travel plans, but it also shifts since Mercury and Jupiter are both information energies, I think uh, educational or training opportunities get shifted or become available for you at this time as well, okay? On the 11th, we're going to see Chiron, our wounded healer, and Chiron is an asteroid, okay? So Chiron, our wounded healer, is going to go retrograde in the energy of Aries. So right here in your first house, he's going to stay retrograde here until December. Now, Chiron is about the wound or the tear of the soul. It's our deepest hurt, the, the way we've been hurt. And so the, what we do with this hurt is that essentially we give it away to others because by sharing with them what has happened, by using this as a foundation to stand on, we, we grant freedom. You can tell it's Mercury retrograde. We grant freedom to other people by relating and therefore we become free as well. Chiron in the energy of Aries, especially retrograde, this is all questions of identity. And the things that come up is, first of all, to thine own self be true, Aries. Are you doing things? Are you doing work? Are you interacting in your home in a way that is true to who you are? Do you accept who you are? Do you accept your life? Do you accept the roles you've been assigned in this lifetime? There's a lot of acceptance that I think that goes on in looking at the wound of our identity. And I keep getting this sense for you too, Aries, and being shown that it's it, a part of this is that you're expecting yourself to be maybe further or different than you are and you're just it's not time for you to be that yet it's time for you to be right here where you are and make some acceptance with that so let me know if that's you that we're talking to down in the comment section down below okay on the 12th mercury comes direct thank you very much right hopefully you've made friends with the mercury retrograde got done what you needed to get done here in the energy of cancer so this has been lighting up and driving the fourth house for you emotional decisions emotional conversations at home maybe even just home repairs pairs have been on the agenda now as mercury comes direct now remember the stationing day so right here on the 12th is when it's always the toughest part of a retrograde or a or a direct energy so on the stationing day give or take a couple days you want to just give mercury some space let him have his cosmic latte wake up get his life together before you start making all these requests and demands to make decisions with mercury's forward facing blessing but here in the fourth house home family real estate property sure with mercury direct you could absolutely be making a move signing a new contract to live someplace else but i think you're also making a lot of home-based decisions and after a mercury retrograde in cancer i think you come out feeling a lot more emotionally sound emotionally fit and emotionally intelligent about some decisions that you'd like to make if your intellect and your heart have been confusing you for sometimes I think that there is maybe a little bit more alignment that gets to come into place as you make those decisions going forward with mercury out of retrograde now as we end this month we're going to see the sun moving into the energy of Leo lighting up the fifth house the house of joy the house of play the sun brings light heat life and vitality this is your chance to be more creative to speak up to show us your talents spend time with the children your children in your life could have special projects or things or birthdays going on at this time as well because remember the sun is beaming light in here so we're motivated to move to do things this becomes a highly stimulating stimulated area of the chart now in the fifth house we've got true love and romance so there could be some play this is some desire maybe you're dating around a little bit right this is self-expression this is actually going to sporting events or things that are, are risky a little bit but it is also the space of where you're maybe going to start something new 
right? Maybe you have had a, a concept of a new job or a new business or a new way you'd like to do something. This is a beautiful place of conception. And speaking of conception, if you are looking to have children, you definitely want to look at what the sun is bringing into your life in terms of conception, whether that be you actually are going to conceive um, your children naturally, you're going to adopt, you're going to whatever. The conception of bringing a child or another life or bringing something joyful to life in the creation is what's available as the sun is definitely moving here. So I think it's going to be an absolutely brilliant month. The planets are doing what they do. We're still in a pretty heavy retrograde period as we travel throughout the month, but it's not, I don't feel like it is as disruptive this month as it has been in, in several other months behind us. In this month, instead, we get the opportunity to take a big shift at the beginning of the month, then the pieces in the dust start to settle a little bit, and we get to see what to start doing with some things. And from the perspective of all of these retrograde planets that are in Capricorn, we're going back over things we've been looking at for some time, so that's not new information right we have done some crystallizing and some mastery over these lessons now as the rest of the dust settles and we see what to do with them we're actually making decisions from the position of wisdom from the position of okay i've seen this i have a different perspective i've learned some lessons how can i take this forward and make them the best structurally sound foundational higher level living kind of decisions for me and what's going on in my life so i think it's going to be a good month i look forward to seeing what happens with you please keep me posted in the comment section down below all right you guys i love you so so much i look forward to seeing you in the solstice disappointments i look forward to seeing you at the eat and greets and of course all the way around the web as well like this video comment share subscribe i love you a ton and i will see you next month bye